Uh, smoking is not good for you. And it's been deemed that anything not good for you is bad. Hence, illegal. Alcohol, caffeine, contact sports, meat. Are you shitting me? John Spartan, you are fined one credit for a violation of the verbal morality statute. What the hell is that? John Spartan, you are fined one credit. Bad for language, a chocolate, verbal gasoline, uneducational toys, and anything spicy. Abortion is also illegal, but then again, so is pregnancy if you don't have a license. Hey folks, it used to be that my year-end video would focus on cheeky predictions regarding those things and those words that would likely be eradicated in the year ahead due to that ideological virus known as political correctness. You know the drill, a Christmas tree is now a holiday tree or a signature tree or simply a tree. As well, so it is that native-themed sports team nicknames such as Indians, Eskimos, and Redskins have come under the PC Tomahawk. These clubs have now been rebranded as Guardians, Elks, and Commanders, thanks to pearl-clutching liberal soy boys who imagine that natives might be offended by native monikers when, in fact, the data proves the precise opposite is true. Sadly, it's inevitable that Braves, Chiefs, and Blackhawks are destined for the PC slaughterhouse sooner rather than later. That's truly a shame, especially when it comes to Chicago's NHL franchise, given that the Blackhawks logo is arguably the most beautiful graphic design in the entire sports world. By the way, as an aside, when it comes to the new moniker of Washington's NFL team, the Commanders, just who exactly is this franchise commanding? A bunch of wimps who bent the knee to those bullies who comprise the roster of team cancel culture? Yeah, that's some commanding, all right. No! How could they? They do this to me! Alas, political correctness, which is a code phrase for not stating the truth lest anyone gets offended by the truth has only gone worse in the last few years. Much worse. I mean, do you know you're not supposed to call an alcoholic an alcoholic anymore? Rather, the tall forehead folks at the National Institute on Drug Abuse would prefer you use the term, quote, person with alcohol use disorder, end quote. Likewise, an addicted baby must now be referred to as a, quote, baby born to mother who used drugs while pregnant, end quote. Oh, gracious. Didn't the nattering nabobs who comprise the National Institute on Drug Abuse get the memo? Mother is under the ban these days in certain circles, the correct term being chest feeder. You know, just in case some 350-pound dude with a beard and his original wedding tackle still intact identifies as female. Oh, shame, shame, shame on you, National Institute on Drug Abuse. In fact, these days, the term political correctness is in itself kind of passe, being replaced by such terms as wokeism and cancel culture. Yeah, talk about the perverse irony here. The descriptor Political correctness is actually politically incorrect itself in some circles. Oh, it's so complicated. Anyway, in the spirit of eradicating and rebranding, allow me to make predictions of those things that will be likely deemed verboten in 2023 and beyond. Oh, and in case you think I'm being overly outrageous in my predictions, please consider this. In 2018... I prophesized that the term brainstorming would come under the ban because this word might be construed as a mocking term for people suffering from mental illness. I was being savagely sarcastic, of course, especially given that brainstorming has absolutely nothing to do with mental illness. Indeed, here's the textbook definition of the word, quote, brainstorming is a group creativity technique by which efforts are made to find a conclusion for a specific problem by gathering a list of ideas spontaneously contributed by its members, end quote. Well, can you believe it, folks? After that prediction aired, a few viewers from the United Kingdom reached out to inform me 
that the eradication of brainstorming had actually come to fruition way back in 2008. The Tunbridge Wells Borough Council in Kent, England, decided that this word was deemed verboten due to the fact that, drumroll please, brainstorming might be offensive to mentally ill people and those suffering from epilepsy. I swear. So it was that an edict was issued in which brainstorming came under the ban. The replacement word, thought showers. No, folks, I swear, I'm not making this up. Thought showers. That's just golden, isn't it? Anyway, let's get on with it, shall we? Here are my predictions for those things that might be kind of tolerated in the here and now, but are surely due for rebranding in 2023. For example, number one, ships shall no longer be referred to by the pronoun she. I mean, how do you know if a boat identifies as a she, her, as opposed to a he, him, or a ze, zer, or a v, ver, or an em, or a ver, v, or an m, er? By the way, these are actually indeed bona fide gender pronouns, folks, at least in the minds of some quacks out there. Number two, the term trans fats shall be renamed by the food science community. Trans fat shall instead be called saturated fatty acids so that the term trans fats does not cause offense to those gender bending lard boys and lardettes who make up the obese transgender community of which there are many by the way. Number three, that big fish known as the great white shark shall be rebranded re for obvious reasons. Namely, the words great and white can never be uttered together in the same descriptor because that kind of hints at Caucasian exceptionalism, and we can't have that, can we now? Fire, you son of a Four, the term scalping and scalper in regard to those entrepreneurs who sell tickets for sp sold out sports matches and music concerts will no longer be tolerated as this might be deemed as cultural appropriation. Moving forward, the correct woke term for scalper shall be ticket reseller professional. Five, the entomologist community shall issue an edict demanding that white Anglo-Saxon Protestants stop being referred to as wasps in case any members of the beekeeping community are offended. Number six, finally, it surely curtains next year for the name of the superb Toronto-based Mexican restaurant chain, Fat Bastard Burrito Company. Never mind that this name is truly truth in advertising, given that there is a huge preponderance of Mexicans who are overweight and are being raised in single parent households. But again, if the truth offends, then the truth shall be rendered a casualty by the uber progressive left. In fact, a few years ago, we did some field research regarding the fat bastard moniker. Here, check out what members of Generation Trudeau after dark had to say. Mexico has one of the highest obesity rates in the I like world. Mexico. I've been there. I love Mexico too. And about 40% of Mexicans are illegitimate. So in other words, there are lots of fat bastards in Mexico. Devil. I don't. I honestly don't agree with that. Like, what is, what is your point right now? Oh, no, that's, I'm just reciting but the I stats. Like Mexico! Okay, but I think that's kind of ridiculous because I think you're trying to say that I like Mexicans Mexico. are illegitimate and that Mexicans are fat bastards no, no, at this no. point. I said that about 40% of the Mexican like population. Why would you cite that stat if it's... I didn't collect the stat, I'm just reporting it. Yeah, but why would you like report that stat if it shows no evidence in your reporting? Well, no, it's relevant to the name of the restaurant. So that's what's what your point in this report? <laughs> so we're asking people if they would... I have been to Mexico! You've been to Mexico? I like Mexico. <laughs> did, did you see many fat bastards there, man? That's rude. How is that rude? Fat bastards? That's... Right there above your head. Okay, we're done here. See ya. We're done here. Yeah. Oops, I crossed the line. <laughs> Ay, yay, yay, yay. So there you go, folks. And in the spirit of sharing is caring, kindly send me your predictions of what things and what terms shall face the axe in 2023. 
I can't wait. So happy new year to one and all, or at least for those of you who are marking time via the Gregorian calendar, that is my apologies in advance for those who are not. For Rebel News, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Well, folks, as you know, Rebel News always endeavors to bring the other side of the story, even a horrible story like this one involving animal torture. But we need your help. If you can go to rebelinvestigates.com, that's rebelinvestigates.com. If you're able to donate a buck or three, that would be greatly appreciated. We don't take a single dime from the Justin Trudeau liberals, unlike the mainstream media. We do it all based on crowdfunding. So please, again, if you can, go to rebelinvestigates.com and make a donation. Thank you.